I want to thank right. you so much, uh, Mr. Dwayne Kennedy, for uh, taking part in this C Stand Up uh, forum that I got, man. Uh, thank you so much um, for those who, who for some reason don't exactly know who you are. Uh, you are uh, one of the- A lot of people don't know. <laughs> well, that's kind of the rumor with you, but um, they all should know who you are. Everybody that matters probably does know or keep their eye on you. Dwayne Kennedy, one of the most talented comedians uh, walking the face of this earth. And that's not just what I say. It's people like Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, other guys like that that are actually saying this. So uh, kudos to you and Kumal, your guy Kumal. Um, when you your left hand man or whichever one, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what's up, man. Again, thank you. And it's been just to say, uh, I like to give people their flowers while they're still alive, man. And uh, you've been an inspiration to me. Um, ever since I touched the mic, you were already doing comedy in Chicago and had kind of locked down the zany spot as you know, the one black dude that they use uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> consistently. At the time, there's been, uh, I think it's been three more since then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, got, I got in there for a second, but then, you know, I started talking about black stuff. They, they started ignoring my emails again, you know. <laughs> but actually now Brian, yeah. Brian is there, so it's, it's been pretty good. They've been, they've been very uh, ethnically diverse and um, yeah. it's like they're now that bird is kind of retired. It, um, it's gotten a little bit less um, racist. I don't want to say that. I mean, I well, I, mean about yeah. It. I, I think that uh, as, as time went on, man. I mean, I don't know uh, when the last time you was you dealt with Bert. Actually, it what, probably was a minute. Well, you know, me and him had an interesting relationship, man, because. He would answer and we would have a lot of conversations over email. And you know, I haven't actually okay. been, I didn't I haven't actually been booked in, in Zany since like probably 10 or 11, 2010 or 11. Okay. Uh -huh. But um, but he would always have conversations with me because I kind of argued with him for a long time in the early 2000s mm -hmm. about the fact that people like Bernie Mac had never performed there. You know what I mean? Which uh -huh. I think is a is is pitiful for any venue in Chicago to have ostracized a talent like that. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and then everybody else that uh, that came but under him. So he was pretty fair about mm -hmm. the conversations because in mm -hmm. his mind he had a formula, and the formula did keep them alive. You know, keep their club going that long. Mm -hmm. But um, still, it was it was very race selective, you know what I mean? And then and, and then of course he had his friends slash favorites, you know, the Skip Paris's and cats like that. That would uh, yeah, quite that was time. yeah, man, that was uh, yeah, that was some time ago because over anyway, I don't know was, yeah, you know the history. But um, I think over time, man, he started to evolve and because. Like I said, they started to be more more diverse type of acts, and then he started like like bringing that cat in, who was open and had more connections to various types of uh, people, you know, because yeah. he he had become more. I think he evolved, you know. And yeah, that, like, of course he did. I I give um, him credit for that. I don't know, man. I haven't been in there. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't I haven't been in Zanies. I haven't been in any club since last year, brother. Because uh, you know. Uh, I'm waiting for uh, I'm waiting for Rona to stop going to shows. You know. <laughs> yeah, we are we are waiting for her to die out or, yeah. leave or whatever she gonna do, man. But since then, have y'all even been uh like yeah. people that don't know you are you're uh part of the writing staff for W. Kumar Bell's uh show. What what's the exact name of it so that you can, you know, I don't I don't wanna butcher it, but uh, it's called United United Shades of America with W. Kamal Bell on CNN. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, man, that uh, I did. I haven't been able to catch many of them. I watched the one where you uh, where he went and hung out with the Klan, which 
was like, this <laughs> I don't know, how, I don't know how y'all talked him into that, boy, but that was well, that was something. <laughs> and, you know, well, that he actually like the first. I was not on the show the first two seasons, so that first one, man, I was, yeah. I was, I think when he shot that, I think I was working on our Arsenio show. So, okay. But he, one time I was, I know he was doing the show, but you know, working on the pilot. Yeah. And I hadn't heard from him, you know, so I just texted him, hey man, what's going on, you know? So he takes me back to this picture of him at this clan rally, you know, <laughs> at this cross burning. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't and know. That and actually that, was, that brother uh, was trying to get on the map. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he he that actually was one of your old jokes, you know, where you was like uh Ling Tai Jamal uh <laughs> like this cross. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, bro. That's right. Yeah, I forgot that's... about that, Aaron. Yeah, bro. Hey man, I'm gonna stick with this <laughs> thing, man. Yeah, that was back in the day. That was a brilliant joke, bro. I, you know, I should have not have reminded you of it and just stole it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I just went using it. Well, some man. somebody would have reminded you. Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not these little kids. These yeah, kids don't man. know nothing about the they don't know nothing about the history unless it's on Google or oh, yeah. it's you on ain't, YouTube. Nah, you ain't kidding. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. You're right about that. Some don't know and most don't care. Right. So we would have been, I'd have got, know? I'd have got um, at least three checks out of that. So, <laughs> but luckily I'm not a You know thief, what I mean? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 I tell you this, man, sometimes like, I, you know, you do your material, whatever you write and you don't want anybody to do it like on a TV show or on a movie or something where it's, it's been documented, yeah. but but if you're on a, if you were doing a road gig, a road gig, like a one night in the middle of Michigan and yeah. you're in a tight spot, yeah. I, you know what I mean, <laughs> you that's, a different, me. that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm not going to be there the next night. You know what I mean? When somebody <laughs> said, we heard him, brother do that last night. Yeah. I don't even, I'm not even sweating it. You know? Right, 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 right. No, I, I'm not. That, a get that anyway. check. Yeah. <laughs> I will say no, this I know, though. I, I, I had a joke that I recently saw a, ple a piece of it in a video. Like I've looked up some of your videos again and it was a clown joke. And you had this song, um, some, you mentioned a clown suit and then you went da, 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 da. Well, I had oh, yeah. a joke that had a punchline that had that in it. And I was like, I wonder if my subconscious grabbed that because yours was so much uh, long ago, you know, yours was probably like 2000. And my joke, I had been using it probably about yeah, 2008. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I used to watch you, but I wasn't no joke thief. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, but the joke was, I want a yeah, girl, man. I want a girl in a clown suit. And then I would, you know, make fun of squeezing on mm -hmm. her, and touching on her. And then at the end, I would say, doo, 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 and the crowd would blow up. But I was like, man, I hope I ain't still uh -huh. the joke. You know, it wasn't your joke. You nah, didn't write man, the song. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. In that fight. Right. right. We 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 both owe we both owe royalties to the cat who wrote that cut. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know right. what I mean? Whoever yeah. that was. <laughs> we we both might get, yeah, we we both might get cease and desist letters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right for that, from from 1910 <laughs> right right yeah right from from the estate of bozo bowl baggins or somebody or something. <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. awesome yeah. awesome stuff man well, it's great to see your face man i, I know with covid too, and the way uh you've been going from coast to coast being a big wig uh yeah. you know I, i'm a wig i, I don't know about a big wig but i'm a wig well, you know, like, you know what, I, I, I kind of put you in the same frame of mind as another brother who was brilliant like you, James Hanna, where y'all, a lot of times y'all oh, stayed. yeah, James. Yeah, you stayed in the background writing these incredible jewels for dudes. And then just, yeah. you know, I don't, James passed away before he could get his real big yeah. bag, bank bag, you know, but I hope, you know, you yeah, can man. stick around and get yours. Me too. <laughs> Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. 
I appreciate that, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause, uh -huh. uh, yeah, because this is it was his birthday over the last couple of days, and I saw something about it. And I was like, Oh Man. wow. Yeah, because he wrote, if you remember right, he wrote that some uh the joke that blew Steve Harvey up, which was the uh it was like uh a a bitch uh a pimp that was a farmer and the bitch better have your potato sweet potatoes or something like that. And Steve Harvey did that on Def Jam and then blew up with it. Oh yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was one of them early jewels that James had because he used to do a joke that said um wait a minute let me see if I can remember it right it was it was one of those jokes where you line up stuff so he was like you're a this if you do this you know what I mean okay uh, uh -huh. and it was it might come to me I don't I can't you know I don't yeah. I don't but I know that that's what got him popular and he started writing for all these people and he yeah. wrote for Steve Harvey during that time. It was, you know, back in the day. That was like '92, something okay. like that. Okay, I, I, I think, I think maybe I met James once, and I saw him a few times, but I didn't really like know him. I never, I don't even remember even ever having a conversation with him. But okay. I've seen him, like you know, and I, when I was seeing him, it's like he'd be in back in Chicago, but I know he was out in L.A. Right for folks, but when he would come back to Chicago, he'd go up, and I would see him. But I never really had a chance to really speak with him. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I know you was you you thought you was better than everybody. You know, man. Who, me? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing, man. I know you. <laughs> you were always the humblest. I don't want to be famous, dude. So you, you <laughs> were mission the accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, well, I will say, man, you actually, one of the things that I kind of grabbed about you uh, is that there's an artistic level that doesn't care about fame. And I hope that that's a part of me because I don't ever feel like I chase that. And I think I, I watched you do that. And I've, I always felt that was a, a that was a godly gift because you got guys out here who act um, cutthroat. Like I'll say, you know, mm. D. Ray Davis. D. Ray Davis was a dude who was talented, but he strived for fame so thoroughly that he's gotten it, but it came mm -hmm. at such a, a, a devious um, price. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I, I want to go to, you know, if there's a heaven or whatever close to it, I want to go there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and there's dudes who don't care about that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, thank you for being that type of a, a, of an e uh, a person. Uh, what is that uh, uh, image? You know what I'm saying? That's your, mm. you know, so that, that's one of my things that I'd say, bro. Yeah, well, I mean, that's my personality, but I'll tell you this, looking back on it, man, you know how it is, whatever you've done in your life, you always could look back and say, well, maybe I should have done this different or that different. But I mean, I think I was, trying to be the type of, you know, I am the type of person I wanted to be, but realizing now, man, in the, in the profession that we're in, yeah. that, that whole notoriety thing, you can really parlay into money, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's, the, I would say that's the only, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't a strategy, but looking back on it, that's probably as far as, as financially, that's the only place where it impacted me in a way that I could say, well, maybe I should have been more active and diligent in that regard. But okay. other than that, man, no, you know, I could, I could understand that because we all want to have the, the, uh, the financial security that, you know, like a Kevin Hart has right now, you know, he'll probably never oh, ever again have to worry about, will he get his, no. will he get his lights paid? You know what I mean? Nothing right, like right, that. right, right, right. He's making so much money. I just read some cat stole a million dollars from him. Really? Did you hear about that? No. Yeah, some cat that uh, it's uh, just just yesterday the headline uh, uh uh somebody who shops for him. I don't know what you know whatever they go and buy for him, but they yeah. I guess in, in shopping for Kevin they said, well let me get a few things for myself. And <laughs> <laughs> let me let me pick up let me get this meal for myself. Kevin won't miss it. You right. Know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, man. Damn. So, uh, I wonder yeah, you he, the is point he taking somebody's... applications. That's what I'm, is he taking applications? <laughs> right. I was, 
Hey, I'm, I'm gonna fill out one after this. It's like, brother, I'll, I'll at least, I only, I only get you for about two fifty, two hundred fifty. Right, yeah, exactly. Hey, I'll ask. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'll, yeah, I'll be good yeah. enough to ask. Hey, can I get this yeah. two million, man? You know, I'll yeah, get them drunk first, but we'll get it. You know, either way, it'll yeah. work out for me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, That's, brothers. Yeah, he's man, he's rolling. Woo. Oh, for sure. If I had known what I'd known, yeah. I would have latched on to him too. Been a paper cup boy. <laughs> Whatever they do. Red Did you cup. I've now I've never met him. Did, do you know him? You yeah, you know, he used to come around Chicago. I don't know him. He would I don't know if he would recognize me or my name, but you know, mm -hmm. uh Leon Rogers used to uh mess with him a lot. You know, like Leon had oh, okay. This, this room downtown Chicago and Kevin, mm -hmm. you know, it was, the interesting thing is he used to come in there and struggle, you know what I mean? But he would come in there and get on the stage and, and try to hit them ghetto crowds and kept working at it, man. And eventually, you know, he's where he's at, but he was around, he was cool. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of them dudes was around. Okay. Like, uh, I mean, Mike Epps, Cedric Entertainer, mm -hmm. all them dudes used to be mm -hmm. on the South Side. You know how segregated comedy was in Chicago. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's why, you know. I you think know. it's, uh, yeah, that's the thing, man. That That's another thing I, I, uh, I don't say regret, but I do in a way that I didn't do <clears throat> more like, black room you know like i said chicago is so segregated yeah and and there used to be just black rooms black rooms white rooms whatever right but like i tell you i used to do uh you remember when bernie had his room at miltroneers yeah miltroneers yeah yeah <clears throat> now, i used to do that man and i i loved it it was it was fantastic because you know bernie he trained the audience basically you know he, yeah. he maybe told them look no heckling no no cell phone, no, no, you know what I mean? You're going to yeah. respect the, the acts and yeah. you cultivate the type of audience that does that. Absolutely. Because my thing is, man, I, and I'm, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm generalizing and it's a shame, but like my thing was, and I, I, I did a few black rooms and not a lot, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to get up there and argue and, and yell, you know, and argue. I'm not trying to talk about somebody's <clears throat> head. Yeah. You know, I mean, and you know. hey, Everybody likes what they like. So I'm not, and it's a, I mean, there's some fantastic cats, you know what I mean? That who could do like predominantly black crowds. You know what? I wouldn't even say just predominantly black crowds. It's a type of black crowd because you know, all black crowds are not the same. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But I don't want to be up there, man. Like I said, yeah. And I don't want to, I've seen a lot of cats just, you know, just go in on the audience and this and that. And sometimes the audience, they kind of want you to do that. Sometimes like, first of all, I don't want to do it because I don't want that to be the focal point. And the next thing is, I don't want to do it and get off some good ones and have somebody be waiting for me after the show. You know what I mean? Because I'm not, I'm not fighting nobody, Aaron. I don't know if you know this. I'm not, I'm not a brawler. So yeah, what? Man. Dwayne Kennedy's not a fighter? Are you? Kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Yeah, no, well, I, 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 used to, uh, I used to love doing Bernie's room though, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they still, they before COVID, there was a group of guys doing comedy in that same space. I'm surprised they haven't tried to get you to do it. But then again. Oh, you talking about that comedians you should know? Yeah. I've Have done, done that. It? I did do oh, that once. Yeah, I did that okay. once. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even think, I think the majority of them don't even realize that that, that space was created by Bernie Mac. You know what I mean? I don't think they. Yeah, really I don't think. Yeah, <clears throat> I, yeah. And I would. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't know. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And the few times that I was in yeah. there, because I was around when Bernie Mac uh, had Miltroneers, but I was a DJ at all jokes aside, and it would be so packed in there. Oh, man, okay. You, you know, you would be in there like shoulder to shoulder with people, uh, trying to get a little glimpse of the show. You know, it was. Bernie Mac had that place yeah. man, humping, you know, but there was always a rivalry yeah. with all jokes aside and Bernie Mac's Miltroneers because, you know, it was somewhat in the same oh, proximity and Bernie Mac was supposed mm -hmm. to try to jump on their team and be like they host, but they wouldn't 
they didn't have the money to give it to him the way he wanted it. You know, he had his own door. So why would he worry mm-hmm. about, you know, getting a piece of they 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 want to give you five hundred dollars when he walking out. Uh I mean they want to give you fifty to seventy five dollars when he walking out with two grand or or you know right five hundred to two grand for having his own door, you know, in that little right. <clears throat> and then he blew up, you know. Yeah, but, you know, I, I you know I, go ahead, I'm listening, bro. You 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 the man. I don't know if you uh this uh, um the first TV show Bernie got was based on that show at Meltroneers. Really? It was on yes, it was a variety show on HBO. He did, I think he shot four episodes and they based it off of his <clears throat> Meltroneer show. You know, wow, that's great, man. You know, uh, that brings yeah. up a, <clears throat> that that transitions us to another <laughs> aspect of this, man. Um, as a person in the realms that you walk in, you know, um, quite often, I would wonder why a guy like yourself and Kumal Bell, I I don't want to assume your power position, but you you would obviously would be in the room with. Oh, Huh? See, repeat, repeat that, Aaron, because you, you uh, the, the transmission was squirrely for a minute. <laughs> I was saying, <clears throat> well, let me just re, let me just reiterate my point. My point is, there's a lot of really good um, ideas sitting in Chicago without a place for them to be um, developed. So, with some of the cast mm-hmm. that you interact with and with and who. Uh, you know, uh, Kumal interacts with, man, if you guys came back or some of those put somebody back here, um, <clears throat> mo- uh, there would be some great TV to be developed out of here, or at least some great internet shows and, you know, stuff to put on platforms, man. Have Has there been any conversations like that uh, been, that have been circling around? And then how do I get in line? You know what I'm saying? That's the other thing. <laughs> right, right. But more importantly, <laughs> just cut to the chase. How can this I get it? Uh, <laughs> how can I um, be down? Like I, I see. <laughs> I know that's right. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, um, I mean, I know Kamal is not. I know he's got some ideas. He's working on some things, but you know, he's he's strictly right. He's a uh, Bay Area. That's him, man. You know, yeah. that's his. That's his. That's his realm. So, I, not to, not to speak for the brother, but I think it's anything can happen. Yeah. But it's highly unlikely he's coming back to Chicago to do anything, unless he comes. Like we might come back to shoot a. No, I'm sorry. He 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 shot an episode of the show here. Really? Years ago. Which what yeah, episode? Did episode. Be? What was it the was focus? about. Uh, <clears throat> the focus was. Uh, See, this was before I was. This was before I was on the show, but I think it was about policing and I don't know gun violence or some. Okay, I could have guessed had, that. One. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it was. Uh, but you know, but but the things that are being done, like the positive things that are being done here, you know. Yeah. Um, and he had he had some sh- local Chicago rappers on Vic Mensa and. Uh, some other cats, I can't remember, but that's how I wound up getting on the show because what he would do is like, sometimes like we'll shoot in a certain city and then he might come back to that city to have a pre-screening. Okay. So he so he came <clears throat> here to do a pre-screening of the show he shot here and he called me, see if, you know, if I was around, if I wanted to come to this, it was a, uh, at the, uh, what is it? The uh, Boys and Girls Club on the West Side. Mm. so they had a screening there and I went to see it and that's how I wound up anyway that's how I wound up being on the show I, it was a long so he he was on tour just do stand up and he said hey man you want to open for me because I'm coming to Chicago I'm you know <laughs> I said open for you in Chicago brother I'm opening for you everywhere I heard that so, <laughs> he said all right so I opened for <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's a good some, idea. Some cats you know well enough that you could just say exactly what it is you want. You yeah, know what for I mean? sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I just said, "No, nah, man. I'm, yeah, I'm a, yeah." I'm a, 
Yeah, not only am I open for you in Chicago, I'm opening for you in Portland. I'm opening for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. we're gonna do the whole the whole tour. Yeah. So, and then at some at some point, he and he uh, asked me to then come on United Shades. So I came on in the third season. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Man. That's yeah, awesome. Man. I remember. Well, I don't know. Go ahead. I'm listening. No. You said um, no. Back back to your point. Back to your point, I don't, other than like the Dick Wolf show was, you know, I don't know what else is going on in Chicago. I mean, there might be some stuff. I think, man, Chicago will be a great place for a nighttime talk show, you know? Okay. That would be interesting. Maybe we could, yeah. maybe I'll develop one. I'm starting to get my relationship back yeah. with the Laugh Factory. And that's a good good venue to, okay. to uh, build, you know, stuff like that. And because the name will get you in a couple extra doors, you know, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Nighttime talk show might be might be a good idea. But I thought they've had stuff like that in Chicago, um, but I couldn't name what it they, was. Well, I tell you this, uh, you know Pat McGann. Yeah, yeah. Pat McGann had a. I don't know what you call it, a development deal or something with uh, uh, C WCIU. And I uh, I worked on that with them that, you know, we were going to do a nighttime talk show, yeah. comedy show, late night show <clears throat> on CIU, but they uh, they just, they didn't follow through, man. I don't, I don't think they were ever really serious about it, you know? Okay. Uh, you know, I don't, well, I don't know what they were thinking about, what their aim was, but I mean, we worked on it, man. We shot a uh, test episode, everything, but they just didn't pick it up, you know? Okay. Well, you know, I Leon- I think it'd have, been, it'd have been great, but you know. Yeah, Leon Rogers got late, late night with Leon. Uh, it's a little talk show. Did you know that? Right, yeah. right. He got, he got it. Right. But, but yes, I, I, see I, I did it. I did it. I was a, a guest on him one night. Okay, yeah. So he he's got that. They I'm I'm mm -hmm. a little disappointed that they moved it to online, but I think the, the people wasn't watching it. You know what I mean? I don't think he I think he was relying on the, the station oh. to, to Yeah, I think the, he was relying on the station to do his marketing, man. I tried to tell him, man, them people ain't gonna market for you the way you should market for yourself to get this no. thing moving. You know, but you know our brothers are yeah. like, nah, they got me. They was, yeah, they got you. <laughs> they got you right on to, you know, yeah, Fox yeah. Soul on, online, yeah. <laughs> Yahoo, uh, YouTube. That's oh, so I didn't, I didn't, yeah. Okay, Which I didn't cool. know that. I know it had moved to online. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know I if it's all fully Chicago, online. Chicago, man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What are was they you going to say about Chicago? Well, I just, man, in some ways, you know, Chicago, Chicago is a great place to get good, but it's not necessarily a place to get famous or to get a, a show on like that. And I think because this, you know, th there used to be late night shows shot in Chicago that were national. Yeah. But I think since Chicago has been out of that game for so long, man, there's people here that don't either know how to do it or don't even have a willingness to do it. You know, not really in a significant way, you know, because okay. if, if it's one of those things that I don't know how it could happen. But if it got launched, if something late night could come out of Chicago, go national and be a hit, you know, what I mean, then, of course, then everybody want to do one out of Chicago. That's how that goes. Well, right. listen, man, Empire was fully shot in Chicago and it was the number one show on television. No, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about scripted uh, episodic shows. I'm talking about late night uh, comedy shows, like, you know, a, like a talk show. No, I 100% I, I know exactly what you were talking about. But what mm -hmm. I'm trying to give a parallel to is Chicago can create that type of oh. energy. Absolutely, but I just it, it just takes somebody to do it, and then somebody to see it, and it almost then becomes real in people's minds. There are other people would come in and say, "Okay, that's that's something that's possible." Right now, I don't, I just don't think people have the imagination, man, or or the really the will to do that because they do they're doing just fine without it. I think they look at it like, "Why do we need to do it? 
when we're doing fine without it, without doing it. You know. Well, what about yeah. what about the Arsenio show? Because uh -oh. it didn't do fine, but if it had come to Chicago, it could have been because his roots were in Chicago back in the day, right? It it, it got canceled. Could it have it come canceled. to Chicago? Could it have come to Chicago and been rallied around? Like, you know, if somebody famous come to Chicago, like Arsenio comes back, it's going to have mm. this 8 million, um, I won't say all 8 million, but it's going to have the eye of people in Chicago first. And then from there, you got already got a bunch of people watching it and it would survive like that, right? I would think. Well, I think that, that the thing with Arsenio, and I mean, a lot of shows, it's just a matter of, it wasn't a matter of viewers, it was the matter of the, the syndication deal and the way it was structured okay. is why they, they canceled it. From what, again, the from what I heard, I'm, I'm sure I didn't hear everything, I don't know everything, but, you know, the show had actually been renewed. It was, oh. first of all, it wasn't, it wasn't on an, that this his last show it wasn't on network it was in syndication but it was syndicated by a, a cbs owned syndicator but it, it it came on various markets so the way i understood it was the the show had been renewed but when there was a major broadcaster that bought a bunch of stations that was going to move the time slot when the show aired which would change the structure of the advertising dollars. So then it didn't, it wasn't right. The money then wasn't enough to justify putting it on and that's why they canceled it. So it, it wouldn't really matter that the show would be shot here. It's the matter of at the, the way it was structured, the syndication deal and all that stuff, okay. you know. Well, there's so yeah. much that goes into it, man. That, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, man. I apologize if you felt if he feels or if anybody sees this and feels that I've crossed the line by saying that. I just would love to be able to tune no, in. No, not at all. Turn on and see yeah, the not at all. Hall show, man. The dude was great back in yeah. the day, you know. And then yeah. I got to see his special too. I thought his special was pretty good. I won't I won't give it an A plus. I give it a B minus, mm -hmm. a B B solid B. Cause I know um, okay. it seemed like he was kind of constrained or he didn't let loose. Like I've seen, you know, brothers. Oh, really? Was this his uh, Netflix special? Yeah. I felt like that. That's just my personal, okay. view, my personal analysis mm -hmm. of the, of the, of the thing. I thought that man, mm -hmm. Arsenio didn't, he was, he didn't, he didn't have that, uh, that fire or that, uh, you know, that thing that makes people go, oh, shit, that was funny. But, you know, you watched it and was like, oh, man, I could watch this dude talk all day. You know what I mean? That type of thing. Just, 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 mm. That's just the way I uh, I feel yeah. about it. You know? Who is that coughing in the background? You got a hostage? Yeah, my girlfriend. She's uh, wrapped up and tied <laughs> up. Yeah. Cough, cough three times if you need me to call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta hang up on you. <laughs> oh man, now people gotta die just because. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you didn't expose me. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, yeah, that's man. It, man. So what what's going on with your your special, man? What's what's the story about that? You know, I know you had videotaped it. Um, I didn't see it on Netflix unless uh, it, it, I didn't see it. No, I did a, you know, I did something. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a, a video special. I, 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 I recorded an album that was yeah. released. So okay. I'm, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's selling, you know, uh, sometimes I was looking, get a couple of bucks like, oh man, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But cool. uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, send, called, me, send me uh, the advertising, man. Email me the advertising. I'll push it around. You know, I got a little magazine. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll push it oh, around. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Look at you. Got oh, a man. magazine. Got everything. Yeah. Yes. The girl coughing yeah. is the one that got me into it. <laughs> oh, for real? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's helped me with that. Well, then I hope she gets better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
how she pulls through. I won't let her get Corona. I don't let her be around nobody. She, she, I know that's right. I got man. it like uh, like they had the gimp in the um, uh, what was that movie <laughs> uh, with Sam Jackson? Uh, Pulp Fiction. I got it like the gimp in Pulp Fiction. Oh, okay. In a box tie. Okay. <laughs> no, co- yeah, okay. no Corona. <laughs> None of that. All right. So yeah, now she'll be all right. But yeah, so um, I don't know, man. Do you have a marketing plan for this, or did you did you put anybody? Did you get anybody involved with marketing it, or you just made a CD and you just go pass it out when you go perform? <laughs> well, I had a. It was it's it's on a uh, Okehead Records. The strip is sold through Bandcamp and uh, okay. you know iTunes and all those things. And uh, a cat produced it out of Seattle and um, yeah I, I mean I'm I had promoted it early on it was released uh, last year but I'm going to do another promotion I'm trying to get get that set but uh, I definitely you know I did I did some uh, radio and I did you know this zoom shows and whatnot and promoted yeah. it so awesome. yeah it's called uh it's called who the hell is Dwayne Kennedy yes so, I do I do know the name yeah. of your album Obviously. Okay. <laughs> I do know. Trying to get better about, you know, trying to get better about promoting, you know. Yes. That thing. Yeah. I, you know what? I don't even think you care, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think you're just one of them dudes like, I don't even <laughs> want, like, I don't want to say Picasso because I think he cut his ear off to get a little attention. I don't think you're going to go that far. But, uh. Oh, no. You're talking about Van Gogh. Yeah, Van Gogh. Which yeah. You know, <laughs> but. You know, you just yeah. make it, and then when you, yeah. I guess you expect when you die, we're going to go, oh, man, that dude was so brilliant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we're trying to, you know, so, but I would love to see you yeah. get, you know, get that Netflix deal, man. Um, you know that. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Man, I'm, uh, I've been writing and, you know, thinking about writing. <laughs> Oh, that's part of writing. A lot of it is just thinking about it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, at, at some point, when I, once I get this vaccine and, you know, because I've been asked to do I want to do some shows, man, but I, not till I get this vaccine, like I said, and, and, and Rona stops going to all the shows, you know, yeah. I don't know if you've been in, the, in any live settings at all. But, well, I've, um, you know, I, I have I always try to keep something going so i had a little spot out in elgin but once the corona once the rona kicked in i i cut it off and i haven't been going to yeah. any any live things because i don't want it man i, I just don't want to get it no but here's the thing i you know i would think that a guy like yourself would be a little leery of the vaccine you know what i'm saying you seem to be a thinker and you know um it, i am man but yeah, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, no, I, I want to hear your opinion on it because I have an opinion, and I always grab mm-hmm. other brothers' thoughts on it. So my goal is to wait a little while, even if I had to miss a couple of things. But I got to see, you know, how many dudes is dropping dead because of it. Because there's been a few that they, you know, Hank Aaron, you know, what I'm saying they mysteriously um, he passes away after getting his second shot. Hello? Mm. Yeah. Well, so. um, I mean, I, I know a number of people that are going to take it, people whose opinion I respect, some people who have taken it, like my father. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just got his second shot this past Saturday. And, you know, I mean, he did have some aches and pain, like they say you will for temporarily, but now so far so good. Uh, his doctor said he would take it. I'm just... Yeah, man. I was like you. I was like, yeah, let me wait to see if somebody dropped dead first. But I think I've I've waited. I think uh, I'm going to take my chances, man, because it's either to me, you take your chances with the vaccine or you take your chances with the Rona. Yeah. So I'm going to take my chances with the vaccine because that Rona, hey, you know how that is. Some people get it, keep it, don't even know they got it, keep it moving. Some people get mildly sick. Some people get it, man, and it just goes left on them, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm out. In, I'm out here in Evanston. I'm in Evanston. 
Uh, and we okay. have a guy who is, was really solidly famous in the city. He opened up a, a barbecue place, man. It killed him within three days, bro. You know, I mean. Oh, we talking about Hecky? Yeah, Hecky, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Like, but his wife, I read something today that said he had had a liver transplant or something. And then. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. yeah and that, there you go. Yeah, that was that part of it. But still, I, I, I'm not dumb enough to, to think I'm finna mix it up with this, you know, with this pandemic virus and mm -hmm. I'm going to win. So I've been staying away from people, you know, and stuff like that, like like you have in, uh have implied that you've been doing so i get it not yeah. i get it turning down shows and stuff until you get the vi uh get the vaccine i get it I well get i'll it. tell you what man uh i get the vaccine i'll keep you posted uh i'm gonna see i feel great brother i just got the vaccine two weeks ago Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't see what the big deal is. I, uh. <laughs> exactly. They'd be like, hey, Aaron, man, Dwayne Kennedy did. You're going to go to the funeral. <laughs> like, yeah, nah. I'll come. <laughs> if, if, you it's have, a, if it's a Zoom funeral, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah, man. But then the funny part is now, People talked about how it was a conspiracy. The Rona was a conspiracy, you know, concocted in a lab. Now, when they come up with the vaccine, they say that's a conspiracy. So which is it? So I'm gonna take my choices, my chances with the with the vaccine conspiracy, you know? Yeah, uh, I mean, that, that was a, I mean, who's to say that both of them wasn't part of this same thing, you know? They, you know, who knows? Yeah. But either way, like yeah. we can't, we're not in control. Whatever they these people right. think, even though they sitting around telling the people what the conspiracy is, you still ain't in control of it. You under the thumb of these people right. who don't do you. You know what I mean? So choose right. what you're going to ride with. And I hear you. My goal, though, is to survive it. Yeah. And so I'm going to wait probably till mm -hmm. about till about April, May-ish before I start really worrying about when I'm going to get mm -hmm. the vaccine. Because by then, you will be dead or alive. So I'll be okay. <laughs> if I die, I'm coming back and haunting you. <laughs> that would be great, man. I'd love an entertaining <laughs> ghost in my <laughs> I'll be the ghost that's booing and coughing. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You'd also be a brilliant writer for me. So during those times. <laughs> You <laughs> exactly. My but, show uh, just advanced. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I don't know. It might be. It might be what. It might be March or April before I'm able to get a hold of it. You know what I mean? So yeah, we yeah. might be in that Rona line, that vaccine line together, brother. That's cool. I got a. Yeah. I got a little hookup though. Um, do you remember Gene yeah. Renfro, the comedian Gene Renfro? Older dude, he mm. he been around. You may or may not. He, he knows you. Um, he's taking the t he's getting the virus uh, shot in the next three to five days. Well, he because his brother in law owns a pharmacy. You know now we got to go through these things. You know his brother in law yeah. owns a pharmacy, and if they if somebody don't come get their shot. Then you you know oh. he, he can give it out to at his own you know disposal. So uh, if mm -hmm. when I'm ready, I could get in that line. Okay, I'm not in a rush though. Yeah, it, it, well, I'm I'm a, wanna, I'm a... I I hope you get it though, man, because I want to see you back out. And and I think, like I said, I'm gonna start doing some stuff with the Laugh Factory again. And now that Bert ain't there, you might be able to come on over now. You know what I mean? Because I remember you used to be like, "That's a good I point." Doing it. I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Especially since, yeah, that's a good point. Nice. Well, I'm gonna do something. I, I'm a, I'm gonna get it together. But uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna get one of these uh, vaccines first. That's yeah. good. I, I want you to though, because you know, that's yeah. what's up, man. So I don't know, man. I don't, how do you? Um, you know, well, so what's next for you besides the vaccine? Do you have anything that you um, have on the table you'd be able to discuss or, you know? Right now, 
just, I'm trying to, I'm writing some things. I'm not, I'm not close to even being near finished. So I wouldn't even want to talk about it, I, you know, but, uh, but then again, and also, like I said, just, just working on, I'm always writing as far as potential stand up. you know what I mean? Just kind of biding my time waiting on that. Yeah. And uh, what else, man? Are you in, I mean, I'm are thinking you about in, a couple of things. Okay. Are you and Kumal um, going to continue working on, on the CNN show um, when Corona stops or is it done? Or? Well, here's, here's the thing, Aaron, about that. We didn't stop. We just got, we just wrapped shooting uh, season six last week. Okay. Yeah. So I have been, I've been traveling. I've been traveling since uh, last late, like the last week of August, we okay. went into production. Uh, what we do is, I mean, you know, I'm, I mask up, love, I, I wear gloves, a lot of people don't, but I wear them. Um, they say it doesn't make a difference, whatever, I just feel more comfortable. Yeah. But uh, when we're in production, we, we take a Rona test every day. Yeah. So I've taken about, man, close to 60 Rona tests. So far, yeah. always negative. So I, I'm, yeah. Like I said, when I'm in Chicago, I'm isolated, but we have been on the road, but we just finished our last episode. Uh, like I said, we just shot it last last week. Okay. So the show, the new season will air uh, April, I think the last week of April, Sunday, April, whatever that last Sunday in April is, is when the new season airs. Man, that's great. Uh, that's yeah, great. so. Yeah, we actually, we usually shoot eight episodes a season, but because of Rona, we were going to shoot in Arizona, but Rona and Zona said, no, nah, you're not, you're not coming here, you know, so we just shot seven episodes. It was okay. so bad in Zona, we just, we couldn't do it. Really? Uh, the, the the numbers were too high for you? Yeah, the numbers were so high yeah. in Arizona that, because we were going to shoot at the Navajo Nation, so the numbers are high in Zona. Yeah. Extremely high in zona, and then they're even higher, I think, amongst the Navajo, you know, and indigenous folk. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, they man, said, I hate, no, we're going to call that one. Yeah. yeah I, I hate to hear that because, you yeah. know, you know, that's some kind of systematic racism that's climbing into yeah. their lives, you know, that's making yeah. them. Is a, it, is a lot of the stuff now, the content now is wrapped up around Corona and how people are doing it now or is it too you can't tell me well i think what corona is basically the subtext of every show just because of the way we have to do it now because most most i would say 95 percent of the interviews that we've done for this show have all been outside or in an airy era area so that you know we can get that distance and that that aeration you know yeah, yeah. so uh so and then sometimes and then and, the, and then the distance Kamal will sit from a subject is a little further yeah and then sometimes there's been where he's worn a mask or the subject is worn a, as more than a mask so like I said the presence of Ron is always there even if they're not we're always exactly talking about it you right, see the right. results right yeah okay. yeah man that's something. yeah brother yeah man <laughs> but it's yeah. a good it's a it's a good thing though um because you know like the climate now is really um racially being discussed and people are more open to interacting in a way that's fairer than like say 20, 2000 or 79 you know 1979 so <clears throat> mm -hmm. the show the show mm -hmm. and and the uh culture around it is actually expanding now you know um and people are more, uh -oh, uh, my, mm -hmm. internet, mm -hmm. my internet say it's unstable, but so, man, I'm, you know, I just, I think it's cool, bro, that you're on top of that. And I think that goes into your, um, kind of your legacy, because like we started this conversation off and in the middle of it, we started talking about how segregated Chicago was. And I know one of the comedians in Chicago that never really well, that actually led the way to knocking down a lot of the racial barriers was yourself. Because I, I mean, I teased about you being one of the early comedians that uh, Zanies would pick up. But realistically, that's a leadership door right there. Because if you hadn't been there, 
then it would have been, you know, he might have had Shay Shay there once in a while or Ralphie, you know, other cats that actually was able to kick that door in and mm-hmm. lead it to where cats like myself could come in. And then mm-hmm. after that, because I look back and I'd say, besides yourself, in like, let's say 2002, it was only four other uh, comedians of color that would be in somewhere like the Lions did. You know, we'd be the mm-hmm. only five black people in there and that room really turned into a uh, kind of a historic room Mm -hmm. but the Chicago was so segregated that we didn't have a lot of people with that courage the courage to step Mm -hmm. over there and deal with you know deal with the the undertones of racism but still be effective you know and then you start to I mean you had already had your career you were on Seinfeld and stuff but you was coming hang out with the little people, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's what it was. <laughs> so, you know, but we need, you know, but um, sooner or later, there's gonna have to be some level of book or documentation to that type of stuff, man. And um, maybe I'll write it or, you know, maybe you write it or somebody in the in the midst of our city can write and, and keep that documented because 200 years from now, it, it may never, um, be documented if somebody like ourselves don't do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, on that, I want to say, man, thank you for taking this um, almost hour out of your time to talk to me. And oh, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and once you get um, once you get the corona, man, and I get some stuff going, maybe mm-hmm. we can get on a pro- uh, get on a show together or a project together, you know, and I thank you for that one, the, the time you let me um, submit stuff to that, um, to y'all show. It wasn't this one, but it was another one with uh, W. Oh, Totally Biased. Yeah, when I was yeah. able to submit that, that actually is on my resume and all of that now, you know, making me think, making people think I might be a smart comic, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> a smart black I'm trying to make people <laughs> I'm trying to make people think I'm one <laughs> <laughs> so it's good man. But yeah but yeah it, on, in the parting of uh you know in the end of this man do you have like you got the website say your website or where they can get your 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 album or anything like that I think can get my album who the hell is Dwayne Kennedy at Bandcamp uh what else that's about it Okay, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was prepared for, you know, when you spoke about when we were going to do your show before, back before the Rona, and yeah. it was going to be in person, right? And you asked me to, would I bring something to the interview? I said, no. Nah, oh, I'm not man. You know what? We can't leave yet. We can't leave yet until you <laughs> talk about that, brother. That is such a big <laughs> achievement, man. Yes. Right when the Corona broke and, um, <laughs> You know, I don't know, you know, I'm an ignorant Chicago dude, so I'm thinking it's a case that you put it in a suitcase so it's got its own carrying and you're supposed to talk, you're supposed to walk around with it, you know what I mean? Like the, one of them pimp cups that Chicago <laughs> pimps have, you know what I'm saying? Or, or like a big medallion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why can't you turn it into a big chain medallion and carry it around, you know? So don't, please yeah. don't fault me for my ignorance. That's all I'm trying to say. But oh, yeah, no, you you have an Emmy, man. Yeah. You have an Emmy. Talk to us about how that yeah. felt, brother. I can't leave you until we talk about that. That was such a big thing. Well, I hear something funny, man. This was in uh okay, 19 that we won and I won an Emmy. I I wasn't really that like I didn't go to the Emmy Award show. For yeah. many reasons, I just didn't go. Right. And but you got invited and you know, had a just, ticket. You got oh, invited. I got invited. Yes, I had a ticket. I or I would have had a ticket, but I passed because they yeah. were waiting to let me. You know. So, but I didn't go. <laughs> you know, whatever, man. I got issues. I got issues. Aaron, That's you typical know. Dwayne Kennedy, man. <laughs> so, so I was in New York. Yeah. The night of the Emmys with my girlfriend and a friend of ours and we were at a diner eating and then I was heading back to the crib in New York. I was taking the C train uptown and I started getting these texts from the cats that worked on the show. Yeah. And they were saying like, this is awesome or whatever it was. It wasn't exactly, but it's like, I'm like, man, 
What are these? Sup? I'm like, wait a minute. I think I might have won an Emmy. And I'm going to tell you, Aaron, I was, and I didn't think I would even be, feel like this. I was exhilarated. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, that's I didn't, great. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't even think I would feel like that. I didn't know how I would feel. I was just kind of indifferent to it. But I was, now I'm on the, on the C train going uptown. And I get this, these texts, all these, you know, the chains, you know, yeah. congratulations, this is awesome, whatever. Where I said, man, I think I want an Emmy. Now I'm looking around with nobody. <laughs> I don't know what to do. And I'm about to get off the train, go to the crib. And there was a woman just sitting there. And I said, I just turned around and said, I think I want an Emmy. She said, oh, congratulations. <laughs> In New York, she probably thought you was a homeless dude. After yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she gave me a quarter, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Wow, man. What a life so, experience, though, man. Not, not, not many yeah, people man. get to win that. <laughs> yeah, brother. And I was, like I said, I was, I did not, I did not think that I would react the way I did or feel the way that I did. I was like, yeah, I was exhilarated, really. And then, you know, it passed, but I was like, man, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then I started texting people, I think I want an Emmy. <laughs> and because you had asked me to bring it to the interview, which I yeah. wasn't going to do, but since yeah. I'm here. Uh, oh, you got that. it. <laughs> yeah, brother. I said, I can't let the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful, man. <laughs> you got yeah, it all man. polished and everything. huh? <laughs> yeah. What is that? What is that? Oh, that's a glove. Okay, I was like, what yeah, you guys a, didn't have? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because I don't like that. You're not supposed to touch it. And then here's the, okay, so here's the crazy part. Yeah. So I keep it at my sister's crib on her mantle, but this is what happened. So, okay, so now I don't go to the Emmy Awards, right? So now they got my Emmy, right? Yeah. And this is September. So now they're telling me, you know, you got to fill out these papers, whatever, whatever, for them to send you your Emmy, man. And me, of course, I procrastinate. I don't do it, you know. Right. You know, and if people ask me, when you going to get the Emmy? Oh, I'm going to do it. My sister, when you going to get the Emmy? Oh, when you going to fill out the paper? Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. This September, you know. Yeah. So now, November rolls around. <laughs> Thanksgiving rolls around. Right. About November. You going to get that Emmy? Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take it, whatever. So now it's Thanksgiving. My sister's having a big Thanksgiving, you know, celebration, get together, whatever. Yeah. So we're all sitting around eating. My girlfriend's there, my cousins, everybody, friends and whatnot. So we just eating, watching the game. So my nephew, Darius, who you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. So they turned the, now the big screen TV. Everybody's watching football and eating. They turn the TV off. What's going on? Stand, stand in front of the TV, and Darius, my sister said, I can't remember. Darius, my sister, I think of my sister. So everybody knows that. Uh, well, if you don't know that Dwayne's on the show and he won an Emmy. I'm like, oh man, don't do that. You know what I mean? Don't turn off the TV just to tell people I won an Emmy. I feel ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, oh no, 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 don't do that. So Dwayne, would you want to come up here? I said, I don't want to come up and stand in front of everybody. We're trying to eat and watch TV and you know mess up everybody's good time. So while she's on there talking to me, how did this go? My sister goes upstairs. She had sent out and filled out the paperwork. She comes down and she hands me my Emmy. So I got my Emmy presented to me by my sister on yes. Thanksgiving at her crib, yes, which was, a, yes. to me, a way better way to get it. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. So that's what the story the of that. That is yeah, awesome, man. man. That's there. Yeah. I, I actually I did get to see the video. You know, your cut your nephew put it oh, out. Okay. Everybody in Chicago was like, Oh wow, man, Dwayne got an Emmy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And 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 uh true to form, I think you were laying on the couch when they tried yeah. to come get you. You were like <laughs> watching TV <laughs> or something, and, and you're like, no, I don't want this glory. Yeah. Why are you trying to give me this? Right? <laughs> so, I then, got issues, Aaron. I got no, issues, man. man. No, no, that's a good thing, man. We got too many people out here acting all crazy with the egos but explain to me what's the story with you not being able to touch it is it like a jinx or something if you touch it no no it's just that it's 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 gold plated and they say don't touch it because the oils from your 
fingers get on it and it, it tarnishes it somehow. So that's oh, all. okay. So so then when you yeah. want to sell it, it won't be worth yeah much. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so for after the show, when I make you an offer, you know what I mean? All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hilarious, man. That is that's so great. Yeah. Thank you for giving me that nugget, man. I'm gonna have to uh, splice that out and put it put it out a uh, little tickle tease thing for the people to come see that, man. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. Thank okay. you, brother. And yeah, man. Thank like you, said, man. Yeah. And uh again, I when I get my when I get my stuff going, I'm gonna try to get some money in your pocket and uh, you know, okay. steal some of your um talent for my audience. Get on the okay. see what you're doing. All right. And all right. uh I'm willing. So so thank you, man, again. And I'm gonna close it out with that, Dwayne, man. I look forward to you getting them shots and us hanging out or something, having a beer. You still yeah, drink. Right? Well, I appreciate you. <laughs> okay. You know, I have a step. Yeah. All right, man. All right, man. Appreciate right. you. All yeah. right now.